I think it's pretty clear that uh, when you get into the hospital for heart failure, the reason is for the most part, you become resistant to, uh, or non-responsive, I should say, to oral diuretics, or else you shouldn't be there if you could, for the most part, uh, if you could handle this with increase in the oral diuretics, you should do that at home. But a lot of people just get to the point, it's over a month or two, they put on so much fluid in their legs and dyspnea, they can't lie flat, they're short of breath, they're very uncomfortable, and uh, they need diuresis, and they get IV diuresis. And so the idea of subcutaneous is to mimic what you can do IV, but do it then outside the hospital, or maybe even augment the hospital stay to make it shorter. So there are, we see it's still very early. Uh, the pump has been tested. Uh, they can give 80 milligrams of furosemide uh, subcutaneously over about five hours. And from the initial studies that's been done, it uh, gives about the same uh, concentration of uh, furosemide as IV up to about 120. When you give it IV, there are peaks but that's over the threshold. If you're over the threshold, it's wasted. So the actual amount of furosemide that you're giving that works is pretty equivalent uh, IV or subcutaneous. So you should be able to accomplish what you do in the hospital outside. A lot of the readmissions are not for heart failure, but some are. And we think we could reduce some of those that are due to fluid overload by a strategy of giving the subcutaneous when they go home uh, in appropriate people, making sure we don't give it to people who are volume depleted, but if we can take this large fraction, maybe it's not 80%, but that's what they saw in a small study, and we could give it uh, and reduce their volume and get them truly euvolemic, there would be less people bouncing back.